شیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم سبحان الله و بحمده عدد خلقه و رضا نفسه و زنت عرشه و مداد کلماته اللهم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کما صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و عدد خلقه و عدد خلقه و عدد خلقه application of the name and the wadu right and then i said that oh i made a mistake but actually i did not because i mentioned two different places in where allah says that indeed we are going to act justly so just going through this when we talk about this okay how do we how do i get allah's name so when we say that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah do that that are you pure, or right? right? Or was that repent? What does what that, that mean, purity? Purity of heart? What, what does that, that mean? Detection. My mother has given us the reason why what does what does it mean, purity of heart? Pure from what? From the sea, pure from the land, pure from the sea, free, arrogant. Ego, ego, envy. envy. These are all that are not there. Anger. Okay. Good. Cool. So, so that means you are um, purifying your heart. I can't hear you source properly. Source Too many people are under. So purity of body. Right? right. The heart. That we do. We keep ourselves clean. And purity of spirit. Also. Purity of soul. Purity of soul. And usually we go through this side, oh, I'm not a, I'm not a judge, I'm, I'm not in the court of law, so this doesn't apply to me. So if you want to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you act justly as a housewife, as a student, as a mother, as a friend, as in, you know, with your in-laws, how do you do that? Everyone's confused. Okay. Ehsan is more than maybe just due rights. Due rights to unka haq hai. Fulfill your duties. Yes, you're right. Yeah, unka haq hai. You give it. Yeah. Give me an example quickly. These are nice talks, but let give me a real life example on how you do it. Yeah. How do you look at one kid and the other? Excellent. Yes. Look at one child with love. Yes. Generally, if there are three, if you have three kids sitting and you kiss one, you kiss all the, all of them so that the others don't feel left out, no matter what their age is, you know. So you know, uh, yeah. So and usually, uh, we would not want to put our kids through emotional blackmail. We do not want to do things um, uh, with friends, maybe if. For example, there's someone we don't like and another friend says something bad about them. You're like, so enjoying this. So you will say the right thing at the right time, even though uh, maybe you don't want to, but you have to act justly. So what we're saying is that we love Allah back, our Rabb, our creator, the one we will return to because we are from Allah, we are for Allah and we are to Allah. And this is my story and this is your story. This is our story. And um, also in the last class I mentioned, but I'll say it again, that most people, they only remind their children or others when there is something connected to sin or there is something connected to something wrong. They need to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as, as al-wadud when someone is feeling very down or someone needs more love or it is a moment of happiness also, right? So we're, we're trying to find the different 
there are more than 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's only when a child needs direction. It's never when a child is already happy or when the child is already connected or you're, when you're already feeling a lot of love for your child. So you remind that child, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you more than I do. So, you know, that would, um, that would really connect a child in good memory with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only with negative emotions, right? Um, all right, having said that, uh, we come to um, how do I get this love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Remember that application is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us these names to learn from them, to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to know him. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us human beings the capacity and the ability to uh, incorporate these names in our lives and to benefit from them. So let us do something really adventurous and crazy. How about we express our love to our spouses today? or those who don't have spouses, maybe to their parents or their children. How many times do we actually send random or text or say it by, you know, verbally to our spouses or to our parents, to children, at least I'm very used to it. But, you know, I'm very stingy when it comes to the spouse or it comes to my parents or my sister or my brother or even my mother-in-law, right? So I think we should, uh, you know, having having studied this name, I think it would be very, uh, it would be interesting to see the reaction of people and their faces when we say it to them. So, and it would be a nice change. So I want everybody to go home today until the next class. And if you do want to share some funny stories, you can. Uh, because I do have a funny story to share, but I'm not going to share it before you share some with me. Because I was like, I'm going to class mein ja ke hai. So I have to do this myself first before I can talk about it. So um, I did it. And I usually do it every time I have a talk. And Alhamdulillah, it's a good reminder for us. Because this is a sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he would express his love. I'm going to talk about a hadith um, which will come later. So that said, um, where do I get this love? Right? How do I get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Number one is to study the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attributes. And we are doing this. We've done this in the pre we've done it in the previous slides. Because the more you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you love him, the more you know him. Second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, if you uh, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told the Prophet that tell them that if you want the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow the Prophet and Allah will love you. And the benefit is twofold. Allah says he will love you. Number two, he will forgive your sins. But following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not mean not khwani. Right? It does not mean doing things that are pleasing to us culturally or something that we like or something that we desire. Following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Quran says ittaba, which means to follow his footsteps and to follow exactly the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to follow his sunnah, to follow what he did. Right. So that is just like saying, uh, telling a, a child that you, I love you, I love you, mama, I love you, I love you. And when you tell them to do something like, I don't feel like it. Right. So love is not just lip service. It is an action. It's a verb. It's a doing word. Muhabba. Right. Love. Word. So following the prophet according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Another way of getting the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says in Surah Maryam, that those who believe and do righteous deeds, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put love in their hearts. In Allah amanu wa amilu salihati sayyaj'alu lahu rahmanu wudda. Allah will put love in their hearts. So the love of good deeds, doing good deeds, will get you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, I did mention 
uh, a hadith that then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, uh, tells Jibreel ki I love so and so and you love him. Then Jibreel alayhi salam tells the angels and the angels tell all the people on earth and all of creation loves that person. And Allah may Allah make us one of those. So the thing is that we need to know and feel this love so much so that our heart is full of this love and it overflows. You see, we, and let's be realistic as women, um, usually are givers, right? We are, we usually give love, but where do we find our love from? If we are constantly giving, where are we getting our source from love? So we need to find the source that is eternal, that will never end, that is stable, and that is absolutely perfect. And that love is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how to get it, we've talked about it. And we need to fill our heart with so much love that we become a fountain. Like, you know, it's like a, the heart is a cup. The more you, the, as jitna aap usko fill karenge, and, and then it will overflow. And once it overflows, then you can share it with people around you. But if we are seekers rather than givers, we'll always be empty. And we'll not be able to share that kind of love that Allah has given us the capacity to. And this is when we have that feeling of being incomplete. The feeling of not being able to give it when we even want to. Because we never got it. But we are looking in the wrong places because human beings are imperfect. If we look at people, and I did talk about love, the human love, yes, Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing. But if you want that love to complete you, complete you, it won't. In fact, anything that you love more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will it do? Hmm? It will disappoint you, it will hurt you, right? And it will make you cry. If you love it more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the love of Allah, if you, there is no comparison. But this love of Allah, nobody can rob you of it. Rob you of it, sorry. Nobody can rob you of it and it will never deplete no matter how much you share it. In fact, it's such a blessing that it keeps growing and growing and growing. And they say that the universe usually returns to you what you give it. So the more you give, the more you get. Um, and remember that it is, uh, it, according to this ayah also, and according to this, uh, it is Allah that puts love in the hearts, right? So we need to ask Allah to put this love in the hearts of people. And we will see how Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he loved his grandchildren, his nephews, Hussein and Hassan, radiallahu anhu, he would say that, oh Allah, I love them, you love them also because I love them. So whenever you love, look at your children with love. So you can do this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I love them. You also love them. So this is really lovely. So you ask Allah for, for love like this. Okay. This is just a reminder so that, you know, the world will always break your heart. And the actually the fact is, that this heart that Allah gave you was only for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what did people do? Man has filled his heart with everything else other than that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the love of dunya, we have the love of children, we have the love of spouses, we have the love of parents, we have the love of power, money, youth, esteem, wealth, you name it, beauty. So or when Allah has made this heart and Allah made love also what do we do where do we if we put all the heart if we fill all the heart with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what do we do with the dunya then for the dunya chale jayin, junglo mein chale jayin, go into the jungles what do we do how do we live on, how do we live with just love of Allah in our heart how is that possible is that even practical <laughs> right this is the answer. This picture talks. Uh, is this picture familiar? Have I ever shared this before? Yes, I did in the last module when we were talking about love of dunya. 
So the thing to do is that you have the love of Allah in your heart, but you keep the love of dunya in your hand. And when you do that, it's like a present. What do you do with the present? Everyone's looking at me. What do you do with presents? You enjoy them. You use them. You cherish them. And you share them. What else? Don't you thank the person who gave you the present in the first place? You thank the giver. Right? So, dunya kabhi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the giver of this dunya to you. So, Allah has not said don't enjoy it. Don't have, don't uh, enjoy the blessings, but don't make it your everything. The priority is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the prophet, and then the dunya, right? So if you have that, and if you're loving everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your main source of love is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then everything falls, everything is aligned and everything is in place. You are strong, you're a superwoman, nobody can harm you. Nobody can hurt you the way they could. If you are if you are relying on others, then you're very vulnerable. And you are very prone to get hurt. Right? Because and very prone to get disappointed. So the the key is zero expectations. If we talk about real life, not really possible. Let's talk about minimal expectations. Minimal expectations. Having said that, another way uh, that you can apply al wadud is the opposite of love is hate. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you know nowhere in the Quran does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he hates? It's amazing. Allah does not say that he hates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never says that he hates the sinner. He hates this. He does not like the sin. But he never hates the sinner. There are very, very important lessons here for us to learn. How can we learn? What do you learn from this? We cannot change the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attributes. That is as the hadith and the Quran says. Right? And the supplication we are following the Masmoon duas that the Prophet ﷺ did. But application is the one area throughout this module where you are open to learn as many lessons as you can. There is nothing fixed and you can keep learning. So open your minds and tell me what does what comes to your mind when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not hate the sinner and he hates the sin. What lesson do you learn from this? So raise your hand. We should not hate the sinner. We should also like give them a chance and uh, in fact help them not doing the sin. Help them become. For example, your child does something really bad, very, very unacceptable. What do you tell them? You're a bad boy. You're a bad girl. No, no, you never say that. You say what you have done is unacceptable. You never say you are bad because you are imprinting into their mind that they are bad people and then they will live up to your expectations. You always blame the behavior and not the person. And this is very important, um, um, a very important note that you should make. Very important part of psychology that you never blame the person, right? So this is very important. For example, even uh, our spouses, when they are, when we are unhappy with our spouses, we don't start blaming them. We say that this act hurt me. We don't say you are that or you are that. That is direct blame. And that will never lead to love. You might win, win arguments, but you lose on your relationships. There's no point in winning arguments where you're losing out on the relationship. Right? So take this lesson that do not hate. Even if someone has hurt you, you are not liking the hurt, but you are not hating the person. So that gives you a chance to go on to the concept of forgiveness that we will come to uh, very soon. What else uh, also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
says that he loves all creation. What is the application here for us? They can now we can learn the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but if you're not going home with some valuable lessons and we're just learning that my Rab, my Rab is al wadud and my Rab loves me so much, how can I change my life? And if there is, we are not doing that, then you are not taking full advantage and you're not learning all that you could learn from this module. So tell me that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that be compassionate to his creation, how can we do that? If Allah is compassionate to us, how can we be compassionate to creation? Yes. Name so that everyone knows Maria. There's two things that come to my mind. There are Yes. Nice. Lovely. Good. That's really nice. Number one, let me repeat that for the online students that we need tolerance in our deen. If someone is from another religion, whatever they're doing, even if they're doing shirk, yes, you will hate the shirk, but that person is still a human being. You will not hate the person. You will hate the act of shirk that they are committing, but you will not hate the person. So that's one point. Second point would be there's a lot of hatred towards job. Mm -hmm. People have been like, we started killing the law. Whereas there's one hadith that quotes that a woman who was granted does not have a sheet, they are So I just need to put it everyone around, not just human beings, but they also are not saying, even the animals. Uh, probably has shown a lot of mercy and kindness and humility with birds. We need to put water out there. Yes. So, Mariam is saying that we need to show mercy to creation also, especially around the stray dogs that we have in our society. Yes. There was a woman who was who had caged up a cat at the time uh, of the Prophet uh, and she did never fed it. And the cat died uh, and then uh, it was said that she was she would be going to hell because of her behavior of her ill treatment of that animal. So if you have kept animals as pets, if you have creation, if you have Allah's creation, uh, if you see that I uh, see it around you, then show compassion, show mercy to all of creation. Uh, yes, that's a good point. Any, anybody else? Yes. And online, after this, I'll take the online. Uh, forgiving other people's mistakes because I think we are very uh, quick to judge and uh, we don't hide other people's Someone's made a mistake, you know, publicly. You find people, it's like Allah Ta'ala says, uh, hide flaws and I'll hide your flaws. So I think we're very uh, quick to judge and not forgive the way Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala shown us. Lovely point. I was just going to come to that after this slide. Allah's creation, you know, the way Allah shows us mercy and hide our flaws, we could hide other people's flaws. Then Allah will hide our flaws. Right. So, uh, yeah, she's saying that uh, your name, please? Sheriz. Sheriz up, yes. So, Allah will hide our flaws if we hide uh, people's flaws. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al wadud, which means He is very forgiving. So, we also need to learn to forgive people and their mistakes because nobody is perfect there is um, um some question that says that uh, we should not uh, mariam says that we should not judge people yes because we are not judge we are not judges that is for allah to decide he is the judge we are not judge so and uh, there is a question yes please for us Pressure on the village, the things don't go our way. It's what Allah intended for us. Right, that's uh, that is a part of uh, yes, that is fate, and okay. that happens, yes, and that is also comes under compassion, and there also comes under mercy. So let me just finish. Uh, I just I have one of few slides, and then we can carry on the discussion. Allah loves you even if no one on earth does. Very, very important reminder. Uh, and this is an antidote for depression. This is an antidote for anxiety. This is an antidote for loneliness. Uh, this is an antidote for disappointment and all the other negative emotions. And we all feel that at some point. 
uh, and teenagers do, children do, adults do, and at different stages of our lives. But if we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that loves us, no matter if all of the, everyone on earth hates us, but Allah loves us is enough for us, right? So we need to tell ourselves that. And for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us. And we need to tell others that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most loving. So I was going to read a hadith uh, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tell the sahaba when he loved them. So this is uh, a hadith with Mu'ad ibn Jabal reported that the messenger of Allah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took me by the hand and he said, Oh Mu'ad, I swear by Allah that I love you. I swear by Allah that I love you, O Maad. I advise you not to forget supplicating at the end of every prayer, saying, O Allah, help me to remember you, to give thanks to you, and to worship you in the best manner. And this is after every salah we read, Rabbi Aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa fasni ibadatik. So how beautifully he started with saying something to his sahaba. What was the first thing that he did as an expression of his love? The touch. He held his hand. The physical touch for children, the physical touch for our parents and all those that we love is a very beautiful expression. And, and see that, read between the lines that he was going to deliver some piece of knowledge. So when we are giving knowledge to our children, when we are telling them, so it has to be in a loving manner. It shouldn't be, if you don't do this, you will go to hell. If you don't do this, you will go to hell. So Allah will be angry with you. Azab hoga, you know. So you will die in your grave. So this is usually the repeat words that we use. But this is also another way of delivering something when we want to um, uh, deliver a, a hadith of the Prophet or we want to give someone any knowledge. Then this is a very beautiful way of delivering it. This is also, love is also a very primary condition to worship because worship without love is just ritual. You're just banging your, you're just hitting your head on the floor and you're not feeling anything. And this is why most people feel that, you know, their, their words are just words. They're not feeling them because there is no emotions attached to them. Or emotions, with all the things that we have discussed and uh, we have talked about. So one of the, the supplications that we can do is, number one is the dua um, after your wudu. And um, um, there are, there is, a, I think I've sent it on the listeners group for the, from the previous classes. There, then you have the Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah also. And, the, and you have uh, Allahumma jalni min al-tawabina wa jalni min al This is also in reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah that he loves, I've uh, mentioned this in, before, in the before ayah, that you can see he loves the ones that are pure and the ones that keep themselves pure and that those that ask for forgiveness. So we are doing that dua. Then ask for forgiveness with this beautiful name of Al-Wadud. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we discussed it in the previous ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he is a ghafoor and he is Al-Wadud. So when you want to ask for forgiveness, when you ask, want to ask Allah for some blessings, then you can also use the word of Al-Wadud. And also we've mentioned, we've discussed it, that ask for Allah's love for yourself and for those that you love. Jahan tak we're talking about forgiveness, we are asking Allah for forgiveness, right? What about our relationship with the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If we expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, is what Shahrazad was saying, how about we also forgive the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because they also make mistakes. So when I understand, when I understand the capacity and the jisikate, the wusa of my Rabb, who is willing to forgive me and who loves me no matter what and all my mistakes, People are also a package. You can't pick and choose that, oh, I love this part, but I hate this part. I like this part, but I don't like this part. Everybody is a package. And true love is when you accept the person as a whole package with their goods and their don'ts. Unconditional love is uh, the mawadda and the rahma. Remember I talked about um, the ayah in Surah Rum? That is unconditional love. 
when you are just wanting to benefit someone, right? So this is what we learn from the uh, from the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And after that, I have uh, just taken. Do not become overwhelmed with this slide. I decided to put the Arabic and the English in it, but for those who are uh, don't get overwhelmed with it, you can either read it in English once as you please, or you can also remember uh, the Arabic that I have highlighted because this is just a masnoon dua. If you want to ask, you can only ask Allah for this part and just memorize this part. You can read it in your salah. You can read it otherwise, and you can read it once. Or you can understand the meaning and then dua, then do the dua. Of, uh, and because this is masnoon, and I have also sent an app of zikr and dua on the student listeners group, and you will find this dua in thirty three uh, slash seventy five. It's I, it's dua number thirty three, dua of uh, Allah's love and protection, and you will find it in the app. When you go to the uh, masnoon duas, you are going to find it in that. This is in the sunnah duas. You will find it. Um, over there and the wordings are beautiful and then there is another one when you read the uh, wordings of this dua you will see the beautiful positive psychology of a believer that what is he saying what is a believer saying that whatever uh, oh Allah whatever you have withheld from me from what I love, make its app make its absence a means for me to pursue what you love. So there is no complaint in it. You are actually going for a win-win situation. Mila to apko hai, mila to apko waise bhi nahi. So might as well take advantage of it and be positive about it and ask Allah for something to compensate you with something bigger. So uh, having said that, this is also from the Dua app. And this is the dua number 34. You will find it in the sunnah duas. Loving Allah and what he loves. Under that heading, you are going to find this. I will also be posting these slides on the listener group. So you can get it from there as well. But the reason I'm telling you this so that it's available on your phone all the time for you to read. So having said that... Um, um, I, I do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, we ask you for your love and the love of those who love you and the love of those deeds that will bring us your love. Oh Allah, make your love more beloved to us than ourselves, our family and even cold water. And this was a dua made by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Um, having said that, um, there was uh, something that uh, you would like to share. Yes, that um, that is the heart, right? He was just. This is love, right? You can Allah says that if you it is natural for me to maybe love one child more than another, but I'm supposed to do justice to all of them. For example, if I love one of my daughters more than the other, I'm not going to give her my best jewelry. I do say that sometimes. Yeah, so that's a lesson for me to learn that I have to be just with all my kids, right? I can love one more, but I can't do injustice like that. Like if one child is not listening to me, they say, I will not give you this part of my property and I will do this and I will. you can't do that. You have to be, you have to show justice. The heart is not in your control and you are allowed to do that. That is allowed. Sadia, did you have a question? Maria? Maria, we already got a chance. So let's give it to someone who didn't get a chance. Uh, yes. Name, please. Faryal. Can I share this? Please do. So last night I was, uh, it's been a few days, I was going through this rough path. So I was putting my three year old on top of me. So I told her, hey, Julia, I love you so much. And um, so she gave me a hug and she went like, hey, uh, Mama, I'm 
you you get so angry and you hit me, hit me, hit me. I think you need a body pop. And she gave me a hug. And I don't know what happened at that moment. When I was with I prayed my Isha. And I cried so much, so much. Oh and I said, I love you or whatever is happening. Yes, it does go into your unconscious. Alhamdulillah, this is because these words, these names are therapeutic also. They are very, very therapeutic. Alhamdulillah for that. Um, having your uh, uh, actually your uh, uh, this just reminded me of something and also Sara and Kara uh, from online asked last last uh, class also and the class was ending that doing tasbih of Allah's names how many of you do tasbih of Allah's names all right so let us make this concept clear that the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there is a name that was according to the sunnah of the prophet that he did the tasbih subhanallah wa bihamdi you do tasbih 100 times because the prophet did it al wadud if i tell you ab 100 times padhe aapka ye kaam ho jayega kaam ho jayega ho sakta hai ho bhi jaye but it is not you should ask me how are you telling me that is there a sunnah if, if i just we just talked about following the prophet the question you should ask if someone gives you Kya das dawa as samad padne, your work will be done. So you should ask them how what is the what is the authentic hadith about it? What did the Prophet do it? Simply. If the Prophet did it, you also do it. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, yes, there is tasbih of it, we do it. But Al Wadud, hundred times tasbih, there is no record. I don't know, I have never read such a hadith. So you will not do that. So chanting Allah's names, we did, did the 10 misconceptions. Chanting Allah's names will not reveal the secrets of the universe to you. Uh, and calling out, uh, doing tasbih of Allah's names is not, uh, the sunnah is not the way of the sahaba, is not the way of the prophets. If there is, then there will be an authentic hadith about it. Otherwise, you are supposed to do it like the, the student mentioned here. You're going to say, Ya Al-Wadud, forgive me. O oh, Al-Wadud, put, put love in the hearts or, or, or put uh, love in the hearts of my children for me or whatever way. But you will call on Allah's name and then make the dua. Right? Seemal? And this is going to be the last question. Are there, are there any online questions, Abdiya? Okay, so this will be the last question. Tell me how many times is it? Okay. So next time, what you can substitute that is you do dua al wadud. Please put love in the heart of my husband and make him not angry at this time and give me money. So yeah, so this is what you will do. You will make you will call out the name and you will do a dua do a dua instead of doing the tasbih. Okay. Subhana Rabbi ka Rabbi lazati amma yasifun wa salamu ala al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.